The SLA has fled their safe house at 84th Street, well ahead of the police raid. Now, at their new hideout on 54th Street, they settle in and prepare for a showdown. They unload their arsenal, carrying weapons and ammunition through neighboring backyards to their new stronghold. And they were identifying themselves as the SLA. They were talking political theory and guerrilla warfare with various people who lived in the area. This was no secret. It turns out to be a critical mistake on the SLA's part. Donald DeFries believed he could move with his revolutionary comrades from the, the Bay Area, where he had support, to a black neighborhood in Los Angeles, bring into that neighborhood uh, these white women carrying guns, moving in boxes of ammunition, and the neighbors wouldn't go and call the police? A lot of the people who lived there, good people, thought this is not right, that these people should have guns and bombs in this house, and this is our neighborhood. So they started calling. It's the break law enforcement is waiting for. The LAPD moves right in. The police surround and secure an area three blocks square, encompassing four different addresses where tips indicate the SLA hideout might be. Patty Hearst remains a focus of the hunt, but she and the Harrises have made a clean getaway. They never even moved into the safe house and are now headed out of town. Inside the house, the remaining SLA soldiers can sense the police presence. All they had to do was look out the window and they knew that there were police in the area because we were up and down all of those streets multiple times. So, uh, and that was our intention, to hope they would stay if they were still there. I don't believe that they really intended to die there. I don't think that was their intention at all. I believe that they thought that they were a cohesive enough unit to where they could survive any police onslaught. I believe that what they anticipated were three or four police cars showing up, two maybe, to make an arrest, and they felt that they were more than capable of handling that kind of a situation. I responded to the command post with all of my SWAT personnel, approximately 19 officers. There I start to come up with a plan as to what we're going to do at this location. One of the little boys who was in the house ran to his grandma, told her what was going on in that house. She gathered the kids together and went looking for a cop and found one. I interviewed the lady and she said that they were located at 1466 East 54th Street. They were certain at that point uh, that they had the house. By about 5 or 5.30, it was totally surrounded. Two teams of SWAT officers approach the house. Al Preciado is with one team. Ron McCarthy is with the other. The plan was for the rear team to walk up the alley, securing the rear of the location, and my team to approach from the front and evacuating the homes as we approached them. We uh, were given information at the command post that the house was about five houses from the corner. We evacuated the first three houses and got to the fourth house when I realized that this was the target location. I radioed the team at the rear not to proceed further. Fort Lone David, this is the location, 1466. I heard furniture being moved inside the location. And in the back, we saw a refrigerator go across the uh, kitchen window to the back door. With this information, I realized that they were barricading themselves inside the house. Timing is critical. Barely two hours remain before sunset. The police know they must act quickly. Anytime you're dealing with a barricaded suspect in the evening hours, you always have that possibility 
that he might escape or she might escape because it's very hard to, to have a real tight perimeter in the evening hours. There was a discussion as to whether we should do a dynamic entry or a surrounding call out. Uh, we decided on a surrounding call out. It's a 1466 East 54th Street. This is the Los Angeles Police Department speaking. Come out with your hands up. 